Hey, this is Bengi Altenorda. I'm head of services for HP, Middle East, Saudi, East Africa, and Turkey. If you're wanting to learn how to embrace change and navigate through disruption as a leader, then listen to the po- Leadership is Changing podcast with my dearest friend, Dennis Giannoutsus. Welcome to Leadership is Changing. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change. This is taking your leadership to another level by finding the balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Hey, welcome to the show, Leadership is Changing. What we as leaders know to be true is that change is constant. Leaders everywhere confront similar obstacles because people are people, but everywhere you go, leaders are overwhelmed, disrupted, and under pressure. They run from email to email, meeting to meeting. Many leaders are not changing quick enough, which means they run the risk of becoming irrelevant and being left behind. The purpose of the show is taking our listeners' leadership to another level by finding their balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. I believe we don't have enough effective leaders in the world today. If we can get the leaders to step up and lead change, then they can inspire real change. Hey listeners, it's now time to adapt in our fast-moving world, and I want to welcome you to today's session and this episode, and I want to also remind you about uh, listeners about the Facebook group, Leadership is Changing. If you haven't joined that Facebook group, please go ahead and do that. Well, we look forward to seeing you there. And if you're on LinkedIn, there's a page called Leadership is Changing. Feel free to go ahead and join that as well. So listeners, today I have a guest here. Her name is Bengu Altonido. And uh, Bengu is at HP Incorporated. It's the uh, initials of what Hewlett Packard used to be, but it's now known as HP Inc. As the head of services for Middle East, KSA, Turkey, and East Africa. Bengu is currently leading the Middle East and Turkey Hub, responsible for deploying country support strategy in full alignment with business, sales, and category teams in 21 countries making up the Middle East, Turkey, and East Africa clusters since November 2018. Bengu has held multiple manager positions with the CS customer relations team at country and EMEA level. She has led an organization within HP of 120 employees and five people managers supporting all commercial product lines, PC, printing, and service. Before joining Beng- uh, HP, Bengu worked in Turkey uh, at the defense software and telecom industries. She's graduated with a Bachelor of Science and a Master's of Science degrees and HP Stanford Innovation and Entrepreneurship Program during 2014. She is based in Dubai and, and is married and has two daughters, Ella, 11, and Nell at 18 years of age. And she likes traveling with her family, skiing, swimming, and reading on her free time. Bengu, a massive welcome to you to the show. Hi, Dennis. Great to be with you. Great. Thanks, Hugh. Now, you're, I think, uh, as we say, you're based in Dubai. I've given a quick introduction about you. Give us a little bit more. Tell us a little bit more about your background. Yeah, I have been uh, based in Dubai for the last 14 years, but I'm originally from Turkey. And I have done a variety of jobs at HP, but not limited to. I had a curious mind. I had changed roles. I worked in different industries defense, software, telco, and I'm really excited to be with you and uh, with your listeners today. That's awesome. Thank you. Great to have you here. And Bingo, you and I met uh, a few years ago, and uh, I had the pleasure of facilitating some events around the top talent within Hewlett Packard, and you were one of the attendees of some of those programs, which was fantastic to see. And But the question I've got for you here is, how did you get into leadership? I think it was an interesting story because uh, at times people aspire for leadership, but uh, leadership found me in a way because I was curious, I was passionate, I was always trying to help others to make an impact, and I became the natural leader in customer relations in a way because at that time I was based in Dubai and uh, I was mentoring Israel and different countries and Turkey at that time. And our projects got uh, successful because 
we were fully accountable with the results and it was an organic progression for me. And also we worked with the different teams, building on relationship, improving on results and finding where we could do more of not being intimidated by each other's success, but rather on the bright spots. What can I learn from whom? Who has the best result on what area? Who has the best skill that could benefit for the bigger picture? Uh, So we became better as a team and being proud of what we are doing while not taking ourselves so seriously. Fantastic. Meaning, so we weren't, I like that, we weren't intimidated by each other, but we looked at the bright spots and we learned from each other, which is great. And you use the word being accountable. How important is it for leaders today to be accountable? I think it means everything, every step of the way, and uh, your actions count more than your words. And everyone is looking up to you to play the role model every day, whether it is your child, whether it's your stakeholders. Everybody is watching you and making a judgment out of your uh, actions. Also, maybe it's true to say people are inspired more from the positives, but also ready to spot the negatives and like uh, behaviors, uh, which is not ideal, but you may be talking otherwise. So I promise to myself, I will be accountable for my actions. I will be accountable to others. And I'd like to be the change every time I want to see in the world, beginning with myself. Oh, fantastic. So the change in the world, for any kind of change to happen, I would like to see that start with me. And I think that's a beautiful way to think about things there, uh, Bengu. So so well done in saying that. Thank you very much, Dennis, because that's what I truly believe. It's easy to get drowned into office politics or criticism, but the best way is uh, also to stay on the uh, positive, focus on the good things that could initiate a change and show with your actions positive results and positive environment and uh, trusted relationship is possible even in today's ever-changing world. Yeah, and I think that's important too, right? By showing your actions, by being the change, being positive in that, that starts to build trust, which you just said, which is really important. So, Bengu, here's a question for you. And the question is, the person can be alive or from history. Who's your favorite leader and why? I think I have a couple of favorite leaders. Of course, being from Turkey, Atatürk is everybody's leader because he has achieved a revolutionary result at a very difficult time for the country. And he transformed and have driven the change in a new era of modernization, including civil and political equality for minorities and women. Also, from recent time, I find uh, creative founders of Pfizer, BioNTech vaccines, uh, creators Ur Shahin and Özlem Turaci, because they are extremely valuable for the world, not only for the impact they make for the world, humanity, but also they are a greatest advert to science and technology, starts up and immigration, and also trusting yourself no matter what. Also, for a different reason, Greta Thunberg, she's such a young, passionate, straight talker person. And uh, she is also a great example. You're never too small to make a change and you're never too small to make an impact. Of course, Nelson Mandela, peace, justice, freedom, what he brought to Uh, multiracial democracy is a great example when we are talking about Black Lives Matter. I think uh, you're never too small to make a change or impact. I think that that's wonderful. I like also what you said there about trust yourself no matter what. Now, if I go back to what you said around never too small to make a change or impact, people say to me, well, it's big things that have to make a change or impact. And I go, no. And they go, what do you mean? I went, well, You think about it at night time. If there is a mosquito in your room, does that make an impact? Does that make a change in your room? Does it bother you? Totally. And people go like, (laughs) yeah, 
<laughs> exactly, totally. But it's only a small little thing, right? But that mosquito has so much impact. So you're right, never too small to make a change or impact. Great examples, Dennis. <laughs> it's awesome, yeah. Bingu, I like the examples you've given as well. So the, the show is called Leadership is Changing. When I say that title, what does that mean for you? Yeah, I think certain aspects of leadership is not changing, but certain aspects are. If I take example, clarity, leading with purpose, setting the vision, energizing the teams, and respect above and beyond all is not changing. Having an empathy for people is not changing. They are the values which need to last over the decades, over any generation. But uh, what is changing is technology, environment, and acceleration of everything at a global scale and much faster. And like anything else around us, leadership has not only need to change and adopt, but has to be the energizer of the change. I see also a lot of digital changes around us impacting. Fluidity of talent is another important aspect. Different generations value different things, have diverse perspectives, which is a great thing, but also a number of years they would want to stay in the job, in the company, the way things also inspire them are different. Diversity is super important, but also you can say you are diverse, but if you are not necessarily including the diverse opinions, it doesn't mean alone anything else. Also, I think we need to embrace the culture around managing with during the time of ambiguity. And uh, we need to accept the fact that we will learn by failing. We can't have an environment which is not safe to fail and expect innovation out of it. So we need to have a growth mindset and have patience to fail fast, learn fast, rapid prototype, and also give the license for people to fail, beginning with you. License, wow. So I, I, I love that. I mean, the thing is, you're talking about diversion, uh, diversity and inclusion. And um, <laughs> wow, I, I remember in Hewlett Packard days uh, when you and I uh, were there working together, even though we're in different countries and so forth. And I remember they, they swapped those two words around and they went to more inclusion and diversity because that's where the focus needed to be, which is one thing. But I love what you're just saying here that we learn by failing. And I think where it's where, as you're saying, where innovation happens. And so fail fast, learn fast, but then have a license to fail. And I think that is awesome, having a license to fail. And I mean, when you say a license to fail, what, what do you mean by that? Just Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, of course. I mean, in today's changing world, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results uh, will never bring the differentiation or exceptionally improved results. Only thing you can do is think of creative ways as a team. And uh, there's no stupid idea, of course. And we are so different from each other. And uh, if you have a team with diverse background, with diverse education, and with diverse skill in the previous jobs, they can bring tremendous ideas. If you don't discount, and if you take a look at what is the risk of doing it, but also you need to look at what is the risk of not doing it. And uh, when you look at also uh, certain articles and interviews with the people on the deathbed, people are not talking about not working longer hours or not making every day the same routine, but being afraid of change at the time it mattered the most. So, you need to be responsible for your own destiny and team's destiny, like a basketball game maker. You need to decide what are the things we will risk doing, what are the things the risk is really too high and uh, too hypothetical and won't bring the results. Because it's the uh, critical thinking that you need to evolve as a team by taking risk and also generate your future successes. Otherwise, doing the same thing 
will lose the passion. Everyone will become like uh, government offices, which I have full respect, but day in, day out, repetitive task in the ever-changing world is becoming robotics and automation candidates. Nobody wants to do a job which is not exciting, which is repetitive and which is bound to become boring. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. Being afraid of change when it matters the most and decide as a change maker what risks you should take. I think listeners, Bingu's fair is sharing with us uh, some fantastic things here and uh, that, that's brilliant. So Bingu, how, how has your business or industry changed and what sort of demands has that put on you or your team? Yeah, it has significantly changed, especially on the technology industry. We had 3D printing and still it's being used in a variety of areas. There are medicine printers, believe it or not. There are specific surgical models, dentals, affordable prothesis of lost organs, and personally designed sports shoes that were really hardly imaginable <laughs> not so long ago. And we have uh, also use of robotics, automation, artificial intelligence, machine learning, virtual and augmented reality. So those were really niche words for techies not so long ago. And I remember uh, my daughter visiting DreamWorks and seeing HP machines and also looking at the environment and how quick every child become expert in the areas we did not even think about. I remember at the first time we got my parents' uh, mobile phone, it was revolutionary and phone was uh, just invented to stay at home. My father was calling me and my brother just to tell he's going outside and leaving the mobile at home for us not to worry about him. So it sounds funny, no? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it wasn't uh, like longer than 20, 25 years ago this was happening. Oh, yeah. It's it's amazing, and I mean, my father up to about three or four years ago had a, still had the old flip phone, and um, and then we got him onto a, a, an iPhone, and um, he wasn't sure about it at first, but it's amazing how they actually do. I'm not sure, but then they start to adapt to to that uh, technology for sure, and um, yeah, so technology is moving fast. Bingu, if there was one thing you could change in business as a leader today. What would it be? What would you change? I think I would count many things, but on the top of the list, I would put compassion and empathy. So we see a lot of challenges. We see a lot of uh, resistance, but it could be simply lack of clarity or understanding. What we instill as leaders is the behavior which drives the culture. And I find it contagious. And every small change you do today every celebration of small victories and being accountable and caring for each other and making the destination attractive is super critical. Growth mindset, I think it is uh, more important than ever before. And uh, having compassion and empathy for people, it will never go out of fashion. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's wonderful. So growth mindset, along with compassion and empathy, is going to go a long way, team, and it will never go out of fashion. So I like that. Uh, Bingo, you you and I have been employees, and we know people who are employees of small, medium, and large companies. How has employees' expectations of leaders changed? Yeah, I think it has been a real example uh, during COVID time, uh, we see differentiated employee expectation, and it is regardless of industry organization. We have people who are single. We have people who are married with multiple kids. There are also single parents. There are people living with their elderly in the same house. Space, people were using the space just to sleep or relax and now it has to become office space school kitchen and everything else so it's a hard mm. environment and uh, change people are going through so we need to know this is not we were equipped to deal with 
nobody was prepared to deal with it. And even uh, your employees work from home or certain days come to the office, it's hard on shuffling between uh, competing priorities, dealing with your child and uh, not worrying about will she come home sick or not, or worrying about your parents you haven't seen over a year, especially on places like Dubai, Singapore, like vast majority of the employees have parents back home. I think what we have learned is having humanity and really caring about the situation each employee is dealing with. There are lost lives and it's not a science fiction movie. I mean, everyone is dealing with it every day, day in, day out, and showing also the vulnerability and having a real connection, human connection of showing what you've been also through, having full empathy, and uh, also understanding that new environment requires flexibility and agility, I would say. It's super critical to manage immediate priorities, but also to remain future focused. So we need to become more inclusive. We need to become a lot simpler. It's not only in the work environment. Teachers are now discussing what is the content which is not critical to pass on. Because admittedly, universities, uh, high schools, elementary are discussing, is it really essential? Or is it nice to have? What we would want for future generations to remember beyond work or beyond studies, what is more critical is authenticity and having the real connection and being cared when things really got hard. People never forget what you say, but they really remember how you made them feel when everything was hard to uh, tolerate. Yeah. So keep it simple, listeners. It's must-haves versus nice-to-haves. And uh, for a lot of people, I think there's a lot of noise out there, and sometimes we make things more complicated than they should be. So keep it simple. While you're also being having the humanity, being vulnerable as leaders, creating an environment where you're flexible but also inclusive, and a lot of people have been stretched, and a lot of people have been challenged, of course, with the fact that we've had uh, the pandemic and it's quite uh, quite interesting in how people react to those different things. Bengu, the question for you here is, what makes a leader successful today in this fast-paced, ever-changing world? I think certain qualities are always important, independent of time, but now it's even more critical. Leading with purpose, fairness, having consistency, not having uh, mood swings from one day to another, and also having passion with everything you do. Because if you don't have a passion as if it's your own business in a corporate environment, you can easily get lost. And you need to be honest with people. People are smart. People are also sensitive. If you don't know certain things, but if you cannot also predict five steps ahead, if you cannot commit on something really, don't do it. That will also drive the culture. Honesty, respect, belonging feeling will come in a secure environment with tangible results, of course. I mean, it is the environment where people want to perform their best. And if your best and most talented people don't want your job or don't want to become your successor, I think you need to reflect back and think what you need to do differently to inspire people. Excellent. Leading with purpose. Wow, love that. And yeah, love what you said at the end there as well. If they're not wanting to take your role or they're not interested in in, 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 in being your succession plan, then maybe you need to go back to the drawing board, review yourself and reflect how come. And um, so so that's interesting to see and hear from you in relation to that. And I like what you also said around that, that you know, there is the fairness being consistent as well, because if you have mood swings, that's not that great. And then passion with everything that you do. And I think a lot of leaders need that passion. They need to bring some level of energy to their organization, to their team, to their customers, to their stakeholders, to their 
environment that they're working in because no one wants to work for a leader that's not got any energy. And it's really important that we have that. And so I think what you're sharing is just some some wonderful things there, Bingu. So thank you for sharing that. Most welcome. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Hey, look, let's let's talk about this question here. And I'm I'm gonna ask you to get your crystal ball out here. And this is uh this is gonna be an interesting question for you. If you think about the future, where do you see leadership being in five years? I think leadership will evolve with the environment, with uh, also all innovations and ever-changing world. But having open mind, having the proper listening skills, leading with passion and purpose and curiosity, I think will be important even in five years, ten years, and even in the longer run. And willing to win. Because also being a leader, you need to demonstrate passion, but passion with the purpose and willing to make an impact, willing to leave the job better than you found it, are critical skills. If people will want to be around you and be inspired with you, uh, what uh, you do, and uh, even if uh, you or they change the jobs they're in or the companies you're in or uh, even entrepreneurial environment, if people would want to still follow you, that is, I find very inspirational because they still think there is a lot to learn and nourish from the relationship with you. Ah, brilliant. Bingu, thank you for joining us on today's show. You've, what you've shared with us has just been brilliant. So if our listeners are wanting to get hold of you, where, where should they go? I'm uh, having my profile in LinkedIn. I most welcome uh, listeners to come and connect. Also, I have a few uh, inspirational leaders I follow. So it would be great engagement. So you could go ahead and check in LinkedIn with my name and surname, Bingu Altinordo. And I would be happy to connect with you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show today. It's been a real pleasure being having you here as a guest on the Leadership is Changing podcast. So thank you. Likewise, pleasure is mine, Dennis. So nice to have this session with you. Thank you. Hey, listeners, what we as leaders know to be true is that change is constant. Change is incredibly scary, especially with the unknown and unfamiliar territory. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing. Hey, look out for the episodes as they've been released. Download them, have a listen, put a review and a rating. Feel free to share them with your friends, your family, your network. If there's any feedback you'd like to give me, please feel free to send me an email. And also, if there's any questions you have for my guests as I interview them or for the Ask Dennis Freestyle episode, send an email as well to dennis at leadingchangepartners.com. Once again, listeners, don't forget to join us on the Facebook group, Leadership is Changing, or the LinkedIn page, Leadership is Changing. And uh, it's just been wonderful having you here with us today. So thanks for tuning in. And until next time, bye for now. Thank you for listening to this episode of Leadership is Changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change, inspiring executives and leaders to adapt and lead a bigger game in a fast-moving world.